This is the second devotional video for Tuesday, July the 20th. And the title of this one is that sin will rob you of everything you hold dear. The scripture reading is 1 Samuel chapter 31. Well, let's conclude our study of this historical book of 1 Samuel. Now, 1 Samuel 31 brings us to the inevitable and glorious end of King Saul. The battle against the Philistines went against Israel, and Saul received word that his sons were slain. He had also suffered a mortal wound from an arrow, and the king commanded his armor-bearer to slay him, but the young armor-bearer refused. Now Saul, knowing he would soon fall into the hands of his enemy, took his own life and fell upon his own sword, committing suicide. When the men of Israel learned their king and his sons had been slain, they not only fled the battle, but they also abandoned their homes and their cities. You know, it has often been observed, to the victor goes the spoils. The day after the battle, the Philistines returned to the battlefield and they looted the dead. In the midst of the carnage, they found the bodies of Saul and his three sons. Demeaning Israel even further and her slain king, they cut off the king's head and they stripped his armor and they displayed it as a trophy, putting it in the house of Ashtaroth, believed to be the temple to the goddess Venus. Now to further humiliate Israel, they took the bodies of the king and his sons and they fastened them to the wall of Bethshan. Well, there were honorable men that lived in Jabesh Gilead, and they learned of the desecration and the display of the bodies of the king and his sons. And we read in verses 12 and 13 of 1 Samuel 31 that they went all night and they took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Beth Shen. And they came to Jabesh and they burnt the bodies there. And then they gathered up the bones and they buried them under a tree at Jabesh. And then they fasted seven days. What a, a disastrous, ignoble end of the reign of King Saul. Why? Why such a, an awful, dishonorable end? Well, First Chronicles chapter 10, and verses 13 and 14 answers that question when we read, Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit, speaking of the witch of Endor, to inquire of it. Verse 14 of 1 Chronicles 10, And Saul inquired not of the Lord, and therefore the Lord slew him, and turned the kingdom unto David the son of Jesse. And I conclude with this thought here. The sin and rebellion caused Saul everything. It cost him his army, his sons, his life, and his honor. You know, sin is hard and cruel and merciless. Sin will destroy your marriage. It will strip you of your crowning achievements and leave you despairing of life. Sin will rob you of everything you love, everything you hold dear. If you are, my friend, in the midst of sin... It is not too late to turn to the Lord. For the Lord is, as we read in Psalm 86 and verse 15, He's full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. And 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9 reminds us of this. Now listen to these words. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness. But the Lord is long-suffering, that is, He is patient to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. My friend, I don't know who will read or watch this video today or tomorrow or a year from now, but I invite you to accept this truth. The wages of sin is death. The death of your career, the death of your marriage, the death of your friendships, the death of your relationships with family. Sin is a cancer, and it will take from you everything you love, including your own soul. But I have good news. Not only is the wages of sin death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Won't you trust Him today? Confess that you're a sinner, which we all are, Believe that Christ, the Son of God, died for your sins, rose from the grave, 
and you can be saved. We read that those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, forgiven of their sins, and assured of life eternal in heaven. Won't you do that today? God bless you. Bye-bye.